The Senate will come to order. Test one, two, test one, two. The Senate will come to order. Members, please stand for the prayer. Leading us in prayer, leading us in prayer today is our very own State Senator Fong Her, representing Minnesota's 67th Senate District. And following the prayer, please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Senators, I thank you for giving me the, this sacred moment on a Sunday morning to pray among you. I will pray first in my native Hmong language and then English. Let us pray. โลตอชะเจจอเปเซ่ญาติเจมิกาโนนุโนญาญาฮาวจุเปจอเซนเรหุเซงเมสตาโนวิลุกันตูวิลุกันตูโนโมเกญโนโมกามอกเกงเกง
A quorum is present. Pursuant to Rule 14.1, the following members intend to vote under Rule 40.7. Senators Anderson B., Carlson, Clausen, Dames, Eaton, Franzen, Hall, Klein, Lane, Latz, Little, Newton, Rest, Senjum, Sparks, Torsray, and Wicklin. Members will begin on the agenda today with the second order of business, executive and official communications. Please make note of the communications that are listed in the agenda. There's no further action required on that order of business. Next, we'll move to the third order of business, messages from the House. The Secretary will read the messages. Mr. President, I have the honor to announce the passage by the House of the following Senate files herewith return. Senate file number 3443, a bill for an act relating to housing. Senate file number 3020, a bill for an act relating to local government. Patrick D. Murphy, Chief Clerk, House of Representatives. There's no action required on those messages. The Secretary will read the next message. Mr. President, I have the honor to announce the passage by the House of the following Senate file as amended by the House in which the amendments the concurrence of the Senate is respectfully requested. Senate file number 2130, a bill for an act relating to liquor. Patrick D. Murphy, Chief Clerk, House of Representatives. Senator Dames. Well, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I move that the Senate concur in the amendments by the House to Senate File 2130 and the bill be passed on its repassage as amended. You can see the journal on May 5th, page 7998, and the third reading on the Senate journal on April 4th, 2019, 2174. Just a little bit of a recap of what was in the bill. This is the uh, bill we sent over to the uh, House last year, and it was a collection of our local list liquor license modifications. Uh, the first one was uh, Metropolitan's Airport to allow for on off on sale liquor license in the secured areas. <clears throat> Excuse me. The second one was uh, Senator Isaacson's that provides an exception allowing the city of Roseville to issue an on sale license to the Roseville Cedar Home Golf Course. Senator Rosen provided an exception allowing the city of Pemberton to issue on sale license to the Pemberton Community Center. Senator Sparks to provide two exceptions for on sale license to the Junior Hockey League facilities provided that the license are only valid during Junior Hockey League events. These two facilities are the Riverside Arena in Austin and the Rochester Recreation Center in Rochester. Senator Ingerbritson, current law limits the number of temporary licenses a city may issue to a facility to a maximum of 12 licenses per year with no more than one permit per 30-day period. This provision provides an exception for the City of Alexandria to issue more permits to the Legacy of the Lakes Museum. Senator Rosen, current law addressing municipal liquor store requires that if a municipal liquor store shows a net financial loss in any two of the three consecutive years, City Council must hold a public meeting about whether or not to continue operating the municipal store. This provision states that municipal liquor stores need not account for pensions obligations for their employees when collecting, calculating the store's net financial loss or gain. Senator Dibble, current law clause allows the Twin City Marathon a temporary on sale for one day of their event. Now the event is a two-day event and this bill allows a temporary on sale license to cover both days. Senator Utke provides an exception allowing the city of Piers to issue on sale license to the Piers Golf Course. In addition, the House added some new ones this year. That's where the amendment comes, comes in, the amendment part of it. Uh, Senate 4341, Senator Jensen provides an exception allowing the city of Chaska to issue on sale license to the Chaska Athletic Park. Senator Pappas provides an exception allowing the City of St. Paul to issue, issue on sale license for a food hall where the license holder would cover the entire premises and multiple food vendors could operate within, uh, similar to a food court. Senator Utke provides an exception allowing Lake of the Woods County to issue a temporary on sale license to the Baudette Ice Arena. Senator Howell provides an exception allowing the City of Sartell to issue an on sale permit for the St. Cloud Orthopedics Field. Senator Anderson B. provides an exception allowing Wright County to issue a temporary on sale of license for the Maple Lake Ice Fishing Derby. Senator Housley, <coughs> excuse me. Senator Housley provides an exception allowing the city of Forest Lake to issue an on sale license for the Castlewood Golf Course. Senator Ralph provides an exception allowing the city of St. Cloud to issue on sale license for the St. Cloud Municipal Ice Arena. Senator Dietzik 
provides three exceptions allowing the city of Minneapolis to issue an on-sale license for the downtown commons, sculpture garden, and Boone Island Park. In the last one, there was not a house companion, uh, there was not a Senate companion, but it was House File 4401. When the Sunday liquor bill passed, there was an understanding the alcohol deliveries could not be made on Sundays. However, the language wasn't clear and didn't specify specifically who they could or could not deliver to. So this bill states that uh, the, the ban will be extended and clarified to include bars and restaurants on Sundays. Sen Mr. President, that is the uh, that is the Senate file 2130. All right, members. Uh, so the motion in front of the body right now is Senator Dame's motion that the Senate concur in the amendments by the House to Senate File 2130 and that the bill be placed on its repassage as amended. On that motion, do, uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. We'll take a brief pause to gather the votes in the alternate locations. Receiving a sufficient number of aye votes, the motion prevails. Members, uh, we now have Senate file 2130 uh, in front of us on the floor. Discussion on the bill. Senator Housley. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, Senator Dames, for uh, bringing forward this omnibus liquor bill. Uh, I, I'm very happy that the City of Forest Lake Municipal Golf Course Castlewood is in there. Um, and I want to thank Representative Tim O'Driscoll for doing a lot of work on the House side to get it in. They're so extremely happy up in Forest Lake. So thank you, Senator Dames, and thank you, Mr. President. Further discussion on the bill, Senator Rosen. Thank you, Mr. President. And I, too, would like to stand and thank Senator Dames for this bill. I know I could probably speak for all the other uh, people that have provisions in this bill that for my little community of Pemberton of 243 population, this is a very important thing for them to be able to sell liquor at their community center, and they are, will be ecstatic about it. So I don't stand up very much to talk about these things, but for the little community of Pemberton and all the other people that are listed in here, thank you, Senator James. The Secretary will give Senate File 2130 its third reading. Senate File Number 2130, a bill for an act relating to liquor, modifying various provisions relating to the sale and delivery of intoxicating liquor. Third reading. Members, is there any final discussion on the bill? Senator Johnson. Mr. President. Thank you for the moment, the opportunity to speak here for a second. I, I appreciate the work that has been done here on the bill. I know this helps out and there's a lot of common sense things that are associated with this. Uh, and Senator Dames has done a lot of work with uh, Senator Housley and others to get this across the finish line. I just want to bring up one small point on this. Uh, we're supposed to be listening to the experts and, and I think we are. You know, we're, we're listening to the experts uh, in, from our communities and across the state, especially when it comes to COVID and that sort of thing. And I looked up on the CDC website, and the CDC says, in the United States, uh, alcohol excessive use creates $249 billion of, of cost to our country. Now, you can 
take that to our state and figure out what that's going to be. But that's roughly $2.50 a drink. Now, I understand that this makes sense and it takes a lot of the kinks out, but we are making it so easy for alcohol sales to be done across our state, whether it's a marathon or in a, in a liquor store or wherever it's going to be. We've increased the ability to access alcohol. And we've got to take into account the costs that are happening to our society. So I just wanted to bring that point up today and say for one second, let's just pause and think about this bill will pass and this will go through and it will be just fine. But the costs that happen to our communities, to our counties, to our families, it's not small. It's a very significant cost. I just want you to be aware of that. Thank you, Mr. President. Final discussion on the bill, Senator Osmick. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to make a couple of comments on a couple things that are not in here. I know that they were not agreed upon by a number of parties here at the Capitol. Uh, our craft brew industry really is in trouble right now in Minnesota. Uh, from the year I came here to where we are now, I'm just amazed at the number of small businesses in Minnesota that have been created through the craft brew industry. Um, one of the provisions that I've been supporting has been a change to the uh, growler cap. Uh, we have a couple of larger uh, craft brew facilities that have hit the cap and uh, growlers for them at this point in their uh, economic career, uh, so to speak, uh, they're almost a novelty. People that go to these breweries are buying it at home at their local liquor store. To buy a growler in Duluth, let's say, at one of their, one of the folks that hit the cap or businesses that hit the cap, really it's more of a novelty of anything else. Um, so it would be nice to be able to have uh, that next year, hopefully. Uh, another provision that would be nice to get in at some point in time is perhaps dealing with smaller container sizes. Uh, I've, I, I, I always point to Big Axe and Niswa. Uh, I've talked to him, unfortunately, probably maybe too much. I'm in there almost every, every other weekend. And he is just hoping that at some point in time we can get that through so that uh, these smaller operations that can't invest as much into their delivery processes and into their canning facilities could be able to have some smaller sizes so that you don't have to drink a whole growler at one sitting. Not that I do, but they would like to have the ability to do smaller sizes. So hopefully uh, members in the future in 2021, we can have a good discussion about that with interested parties and get that across the finish line. So thank you. Members, any final discussion on the bill? We're on final passage of Senate file 2130. Seeing no further discussion, the secretary will take the roll. Members in the retiring room, please come to the chamber to vote. <laughs> members in room 303, room 303, please come down to the chamber to vote. And members in the president's office, please come to the chamber to vote. Members in room 323, room 323, please come to the chamber to vote. Members in room 237, 237, please come to the chamber to vote. And members in room 206, room 206, please come to the chamber to vote.
Members, I know there's a lot of excitement in the air because it's the last day of session, but again, we're under a roll call vote, so please take your discussions outside the chamber, especially when we call on the Senator Canton, Senator Benson to report the members so we can hear clearly. At this time, I will call on Senator Kent to report the votes of the members voting under Rule 40.7. Senator Kent. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I report aye for Senator Carlson. Senator Carlson votes aye. Senator Kent. I report aye for Senator Clausen. Senator Clausen votes aye. Senator Kent. I report aye for Senator Eaton. Senator Eaton votes aye. Senator Kent. I report aye for Senator Franzen. Senator Franzen votes aye. Senator Kent. I report aye for Senator Klein. Senator Klein votes aye. Senator Kent. I report aye for Senator Lane. Senator Lane votes aye. Senator Kent. I report aye for Senator Latz. Senator Latz votes aye. Senator Kent. I report aye for Senator Little. Senator Little votes aye. Senator Kent. I report aye for Senator Newton. Senator Newton votes aye. Senator Kent. I report no for Senator Rest. Senator Rest votes no. Senator Kent. I report aye for Senator Sparks. Senator Sparks votes aye. Senator Kent. I report aye for Senator Torres Ray. Senator Torres Ray votes aye. Senator Kent. I report aye for Senator Wickland. Senator Wickland votes aye. Senator Kent, do you have a vote for Senator Pappas? I feel like you will very shortly. Okay. I will now call on Senator Benson to report the votes of the members voting under Rule 40.7. Senator Benson. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Anderson B. votes aye. Senator Anderson B. votes aye. Senator Benson. Senator Hall votes aye. Senator Hall votes aye. Senator Benson. Senator Senjum votes aye. Senator Senjum votes aye. Senator, Senator Kent. Thank you, Mr. President. I report aye for Senator Hayden. Senator Hayden votes aye. Senator Kent. I report aye for Senator Pappas. Senator Pappas votes aye. All members having voted who have the desire to vote, the Secretary will close the roll. There being 62 ayes and five nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. The Secretary will read the next message. Mr. President, I have the honor to announce the passage by the House of the following Senate file as amended by the House in which the amendments of the concurrence of the Senate is respectfully requested. Senate file number 3560, a bill for an act relating to human services. Patrick D. Murphy, Chief Clerk, House of Representatives. Senator Benson. Mr. President, I move that Senate file, Senate file 3560 be laid on the table. On that motion, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed say no. We will take a brief pause to gather the votes of the members in alternate locations. Receiving a sufficient number of aye votes, the motion prevails. The Secretary will read the next message. Mr. President, I have the honor to announce the passage by the House of the following House files herewith transmitted. House file numbers 3156 and 3230. Patrick D. Murphy, Chief Clerk, House of Representatives. There's no action required on that message. Moving to the fourth order of business, first reading of House bills. The House files listed in the agenda will be given their first reading and referred as indicated. Senator Benson. Mr. President, I move that House Files 3156 and 3230 be laid on the table. On that motion, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed say no. We'll take a brief pause.
Receiving a sufficient number of aye votes, the motion prevails. We'll continue on the agenda with the eighth order of business, introduction and first reading of Senate bills. Members listed in today's introduction calendar are Senate file numbers 4629 through 4633. These Senate files are given their first reading and referred as indicated. Moving to the ninth order of business, motions and resolutions. We have a few author's motions listed in the agenda. We'll take these author's motions as one motion. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed say no. We'll take a brief pause to gather the votes of the members in alternate locations. Receiving a sufficient number of aye votes, the motion prevails. Senate Resolution Number 236 will be referred to the Committee on Rules and Administration. Remaining under motions and resolutions, Senator Benson. Mr. President, I move that House Files Number 2, I'm sorry, uh, 2682, 4500, 4597, and 4603 be taken from the table. Senator Benson, I believe the last one uh, is 4602. 4602. My apologies. On that motion, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. We'll take a brief pause. lifting from the table. <laughs> Receiving a sufficient number of I votes, the motion prevails. Senator Benson. Mr. President, pursuant to Rule 26, I des designate the following bills be made special orders for immediate consideration. Members, there's a list on your desk. Members, the first bill up for consideration is House File 2682, Senator Rood. Thank you, Mr. President and members. Today we have before you the Outdoor Heritage Fund, the Lassart sams Bill. We passed this bill early on in session out of committee. However, as you know, the, the Outdoor Heritage Fund is based on the sales tax. And because of the pandemic and the, and in the economic environment going on right now, uh, we decided it prudent to uh, wait until MMB came out with their uh, forecast. And so we worked uh, very hard with the House to come up with a solution on this. The original bill was $137 million, and we had to take a $20 million cut out of this bill um, to make it um, fiscally responsible. And I really want to uh, thank the um, House Committee and the members for working so diligently with us on this, and also um, to my uh, CA, Matt Elfritz, and Ben Stanley, and Dan Miller, and Greg Knopp, because they were absolutely instrumental in getting us to where we are right now. So this is a, uh, this bill, you'll, there's spreadsheets if you'd like to see uh, what uh, um, the projects are that are in it. One of the things that the Senate has been in, incredibly um, consistent on is adhering to the uh, recommendations of the council in every, the parks and trails, the outdoor heritage, the arts, uh, clean water, 
we've been very uh, consistent on adhering to their recommendations. So in order to do that, and I, if Senator Eaton, if you are listening uh, remotely today, I want, I want to thank you for always being so strident in um, making sure that we do that. And I want to tell you today that we did exactly that. And in order to do that and not to pick winners and lo losers, uh, we took uh, and we did a, a reduction off of all of the projects so that they all will have um, less money to work with, but all of the projects that were recommended by the council go through. So we had to take a 14.2% reduction on all of the projects. And we are hoping that if there is a project that would have trouble next year making it, that we can address that in the next legislative session and they would have first priority on their project. We also took some house language, which I think was very um, um, good. It's uh, well, the meetings will now be live videoed so people can watch the, me the meetings and it's, it lends to uh, more transparency. There was a few technical changes. We had to take the name Minnesota out from Trout Unlimited because that was not correct. We also um, extended uh, one year all of the legacy money funds because as you know the projects are not going forward right now, um, but they will. And so uh, we extended it one year so that the trails can be built, the projects can be done, but they will need more time as going forward. Then we extended the arts a little differently because, as you know, they are a little different animal. They have uh, concerts, they have live performances, they have to sell tickets, and so they might need a little bit more time to get going uh, when we uh, start up things back up again, so we gave them two years instead of one to get going, but we did put language in the bill to say that they can use the monies, but they have to stri stay strictly to the way the Constitution says they must spend them. We included the Medal of Honor from the Legacy Bill um, because the dates ran out, but the funding was there and their matching funds have been raised. We also included a technical change uh, in the name of the Rochester Children Museum, and we also included a provision for the uh, moving of the uh, expenses for the art board with Senator Kiffmeyer from, uh, from her committee um, approved. Uh, with that, members, uh, I'll stand for questions. I think we have a really good, solid bill this year, uh, and I, uh, I appreciate uh, any questions. Discussion on House File 2682. The Secretary will give House File 2682 its third reading. House File Number 2682, a bill for an act relating to legacy appropriating money from the Outdoor Heritage Fund. Third reading. Final discussion on the bill. Senator Cohen. Uh, Mr. President, uh, let me just make a couple of comments relative to this year's bill. And uh, uh, as I think, if not all, most members know that I take some proprietary interest in the Legacy Amendment. Uh, it was put together when I was Chairman of the Finance Committee in, in 2006, 2007, 2008. Um, and certainly it's something that's had a, an immense impact on almost every single person in the state of Minnesota. And under very difficult circumstances, I just want to offer a compliment to Senator Rood, who has been a tremendous guardian of the Legacy Amendment over these last several years. Uh, that's coupled, obviously, with uh, the work on the Outdoor Heritage Fund this year uh, with Senator Lang. And when we were in the process of the promulgation of the Legacy Amendment, I've mentioned this on the I've mentioned this on the floor. This is, of course, my last opportunity to mention this on the floor. That uh, a promise was made to the sportsmen of, of Minnesota that we would uphold the recommendations coming out of the uh, uh, Lassard Sam's uh, commission. And Mr. President, if you'll allow me just a note relative to the commission, um, I want to make sure, I think folks here understand, but I, I, I think I'd be re remiss for not mentioning, uh, Dallas Sam's was one of the partners, in fact, was the original chief author of the first legacy amendment effort. Uh, that, that postdates uh, the work of Senator Lassard, who by that point had left the legislature. And Senator Sams, uh, as, as folks know, uh, was uh, very active in his chairmanship, uh, in, his, in his work on this bill, 
And then when his illness came back, of course, he, uh, he did not come back to, uh, to the State Senate in 2007 and passed away, I believe, in February of 2007. And uh, uh, when we first put together the legacy bill, we wanted to honor Dallas and did so by, uh, by naming the commission after him. And obviously, in the case of former Senator, Senator Lassard, uh, Bob Lassard was the person who began the legacy effort. Obviously, it, it grew exponentially from uh, what Senator Lassard did, where I think going back to 1998 or 1999, uh, he was the champion of providing support for uh, the outdoors uh, in Minnesota. And so it was very appropriate that the commission be named after the two of them. But also, uh, again, I just wanted to, uh, to acknowledge that, as I said, we had made a promise to the sportsmen of Minnesota and I've always been very proud that uh, not just something under my chairmanship, but under the chairman, uh, chairmanships of Senator Rood uh, and uh, certainly the last four years, that promise has been continued and kept to the sportsmen. Senator Rood has also made sure that she has uh, taken care of the other funds uh, within the bill, the Clean Water Fund, the Parks and Trails Fund, the Arts and Culture Fund. And as she's indicated, this is, as we've all talked, an unusual year, a difficult year, and the funds have been impacted in very significant ways because there is a total reliance on the sales tax. And she's indicated why there the, there's the need for bringing in some of the other funds, which normally would not be done in this year, uh, because uh, except for the Outdoor Heritage Fund, their funds are budgeted on a biannual basis. But given what's happening, uh, there was the need to do some work with those funds. And Senator Rood has once more shown herself to be a, a true steward of what has become extremely important to the entirety of the state of Minnesota. So thank you, Senator Rood. Further discussion on the bill, Senator Bigham. Thank you, Mr. President. I too want to compliment Senator Rood on, on this bill. These are tremendous projects that uh, were vetted by the council and did a lot of work and these aren't easy times as uh, Senator Cohen has alluded to trying to get through the process in a very deliberative and uh, transparent way in a fair way. So I just uh, too want to compliment Senator Rood's leadership on this. Any other final discussion on the bill before we go to the bill's author? Senator Rood. Mr. President, thank you. Um, and I also want to, I, I believe I did not mention Senator Lang, who shepherded this, the projects in this bill, and he also sits on, on the council and has done a great job. Um, thank you, Senator Cohen, for mentoring Dallas Sams, because I did serve with Dallas, and he was really a, a tremendous legislator, and this is a great legacy for him. But I also want to thank Senator Cohen because he has been a great mentor and friend and partner in this. When I first took over the, um, the legacy, it's like drinking water from a fire hose. It's, a, it's something, the learning curve was really incredible and he was gracious with his time uh, in his office. He sat in my office to help me learn um, about it. And so he will be greatly missed and I hope he does, I, still, I hope he stays engaged in the legacy because he's been so much of a part of it. Um, members, I, I really want to um, uh, mention also that this body insisted on leaving a 5% uh, balance in each fund. And I think it comes to roost today that that money is in there to protect us and to pr protect our projects. And so it was with great foresight that this body did that. So with that, um, I ask for a green vote today. And I think everyone in this chamber should be very proud of how the Senate represents the legacy. Final discussion on the bill, Senator Lang. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, members. Uh, just a little bit more in-depth detail on what the Lassard Sam's Council is, and uh, d just that I'm, I'm very proud to be part of that group. Uh, big thanks goes out to the staff, Lassard Sam's, the work that they do. It is a very tenuous process. I'm uh, expecting very shortly the very thick three-ring binder that uh, we receive every year and spend months uh, upon months, one thing, traveling throughout the state looking at projects that have been completed, uh, thinking about the things that we're going to try to support in the upcoming years. Um, I, I don't know if Senator Rood mentioned it, but we did have to take a 14% cut when it comes to the original $135 million that was going to be spent in Lassard Sams. Uh, when we came back, it's now at, I'll get this right, 117,915. 
And I was a little discouraged by that originally, and then I was reminded by one of the, the lobbyists that represents the groups that benefit, the Lissards, benefit from the Lassard Sam's group, that you have to realize, yeah, we had a 14% reduction, but this is money that is, is going to our environment, going to great causes throughout the state, and I have, and you got to realize 14% reduction is still a huge amount of, of, of money. So not, we started at 83,000 acres being reserved, protected, or restored throughout the state of Minnesota. We're down to seven, just over 70,000 acres in this bill. That's a significant amount of money. That's a significant amount of land that's going to be reserved, res, <laughs> excuse me, restored, protected, or preserved. So. Um, with that, Mr. President, uh, I appreciate the work that Senator Root has done. Again, a great thank you to the Lassard Sam's Council, uh, all the members, all the legislative members, the staff that puts tireless, tireless hours. Well, I would call them tireful hours. After the time they spent, they, they sure put a lot of time and energy into this. So uh, with that, Mr. President, thank you. Members, we're on final passage of House File 2682. Is there any final discussion? Seeing none, the secretary will take the roll. <laughs> Members in the retiring room, in the retiring room, please come to the chamber to vote. Members in room 303, room 303, please come to the chamber to vote. And members in the president's office, please come to the chamber to vote. Members in room 303, please come to the chamber to vote. Members in the president's office, please come to the chamber to vote. Members in room 323, room 323, please come to the chamber to vote. Members in room 237, room 237, please come to the chamber to vote. And members in room 206, room 206, please come to the chamber to vote.
I will now call on Senator Kent to report the votes of the members voting under Rule 40.7. Senator Kent. Thank you, Mr. President. I report aye for Senator Carlson. Senator Carlson votes aye. Members, members, please keep the volume down. We're under a roll call vote. Thank you, members. Senator Kent. Thank you, Mr. President. I report aye for Senator Clawson. Senator Clawson votes aye. Senator Kent. I report aye for Senator Eaton. Senator Eaton votes aye. Senator Kent. I report aye for Senator Franzen. Senator Franzen votes aye. Senator Kent. I report aye for Senator Klein. Senator Klein votes aye. Senator Kent. I report aye for Senator Lane. Senator Lane votes aye. Senator Kent. I report aye for Senator Latz. Senator Latz votes aye. Senator Kent. I report aye for Senator Little. Senator Little votes aye. Senator Kent. I report aye for Senator Newton. Senator Newton votes aye. Senator Kent. I report aye for Senator Pappas. Senator Pappas votes aye. Senator Kent. I report aye for Senator Rest. Senator Rest votes aye. Senator Kent. I report aye for Senator Sparks. Senator Sparks votes aye. Senator Kent. I report aye for Senator Torres Ray. Senator Torres Ray votes aye. Senator Kent. I report aye for Senator Wickland. Senator Wickland votes aye. I will now call on Senator Benson to re I will now call on Senator Rosen to report the votes of the members voting under Rule 40.7. Senator Rosen. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Anderson B. votes aye. Senator Anderson B. votes aye. Senator, Senator Rosen. Senator Dames, Dames votes aye. Senator Dames votes aye. Senator Rosen. Senator Hall votes aye. Senator Hall votes aye. Senator Rosen. Senator Senjum votes aye. Senator Senjum votes aye. All members having voted who have the desire to vote, the Secretary will close the roll. There being 67 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and it's titled agreed to. All right, members, if I could have your attention, please. I've never done this before, so go <laughs> easy on me, all right? The next bill under consideration on General Orders number 80. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, and, and who is raising the point of order, please? <laughs> Senator Limmer, uh, state your point of order. Okay, if, if the members would please settle down. And uh, as I indicated, uh, next bill is under uh, general orders is House File, special orders, I'm sorry, obviously. House File 4206, <laughs> Senator Utke. Let's give Senator Utke our total attention. Senator Utke. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, members, um, I've got before you today some of what you heard last night, or I can say last night, but uh, eight, nine, ten hours ago. But um, House File 4206 is this year's workers' compensation policy bill for this session. And the part I'm going to spend the most time on is going to be the policy side of it. And uh, the policy side is the part of the bill that was approved by the Workers' Compensation Advisory Council. And I'm just going to take and uh, list kind of the bullet points and what's behind them. Um, most, in fact, everything here really revolves around the new campus system, the new communication systems, going into an electronic communication system at the Department of Labor and Industry to handle the work comp claims. Um, as, as I go through here, Department of Commerce proposals that are in the bill, adopts Department of Commerce proposed amendments related to financial requirements for self-insured employers and group self-insurers. There's an occupational disease presumption, adds correctional officers and security counselors employed by cities, counties, and the state to the list of occupations for which certain diseases and PTSD are presumed to be occupational diseases if certain conditions are met. Vocational rehabilitation adds supervision requirements for qualified rehabilitation consultant interns. Payment to estate of employee allows insurers to pay the estate of a deceased injured worker following receipt of complaint affidavit of collection of personal property. 
Second injury fund reimbursement limits reimbursement to the insurer for medication provided to an injured worker covered by the second injury fund to the work comp pharmacy fee schedule amount. Employment and insurance data clarifies what insurance policy data reported to the Department of Labor and Industry by the contractor is public and how it may be requested for insurance verification purposes. Prompt first action report clarifies the requirements for DLI's annual prompt first action report on the percentage of claims that were timely paid or denied each year. Filing electronic reports of injury in campus, and again campus is the new electronic system, specifies the workers' compensation reports that payers must provide to employees and electronically file in campus. Provide the commissioner with an authority to amend or repeal rules that conflict with the service and electronic filing requirements. And this is part of bringing it from the paper system to the electronic system so that everything aligns. It's not really creating a lot of new things. It's just so that the systems all speak together. Um, access to the division file in campus clarifies who has access to the campus division file and under what circumstances requires that campus generate an audit trail when the division file is assessed. Creating a campus account specifies who must create a campus account and requires those persons to authenticate their identity and agree to terms safeguarding data security and privacy of data to campus. And finally, service through an agency is electronic system. Identifies obligations of senders, receipts, and agencies when a party to a claim electronically files a document in the wrong file or sends a document to the wrong person. Provides that the agency whose electronic system is used is not responsible under Minnesota statute for the improper release. Uh uh, Senator Aki, uh, let me just mention to members that the language is actually contained on uh, the second engrossment of Senate File 4130, so everybody has that. I uh, because we announced uh, that the bill was actually uh, House File 4206. Mr. Sir, President, I, was, I have a hard time hearing what you're saying, I, I, so and, if you could. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Senator. Um, we're actually look, working on the language of the second engrossment of Senate File 4130. And uh, I had, had announced it was House File 4206, but yep. the language we have is on uh, Senate File 4130, the second engrossment. So I just correct. want to make sure members knew that. So Mr. You, President, you that is correct. That. It is our language from the Senate file, which is being put on the House file, which then brings everything that I just covered as the policy side from the Department of Labor and Industry and approved by the Workers' Comp Advisory Council, plus what we discussed here in the wee hours this morning concerning the, the payment of the presumptive um, claims related to COVID-19. Okay, thank you, Senator Aki. Is there further discussion uh, on the part of members? Uh, any amendments on the part of members? Uh, Senator Aki, anything else you wish to say? Nope, I think we uh, pretty much covered it. Uh, one thing I was going to add that we maybe got missed on a little bit last night, and but we, we finished that up, it was the fact that what we were discussing was the payment of these presumptive claims. Um, and we, as the legislature, had passed back in early April. Um, over in the other body, it was 130 to 4, and in our body, it was 67 to 0. The fact that we supported the presumptive language and we just wanted to make sure that we acknowledge the fact that we pass those liabilities on to the payers and our payment proposal is helping make them whole for the, what we did uh, a month and a half ago. So that's all I really need to add. Uh, with that, Mr. President, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, uh, Senator Aki. So seeing no further discussion, the Secretary will give uh, House File 4206 its third reading. House File Number 4206. A bill for an act relating to workers' compensation. Third reading. Uh, no further discussion. If not, uh, the secretary will take the roll on the final passage of House File 4206. Uh, where do I? Yeah, where do I?
If everyone on the floor has voted, uh, we'll then call on the uh, members in alternate locations. If the senators in the retiring room, Capitol 303, and the president's office would come to the floor to vote. Depends where you are. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Am I doing the next? Okay, then if we could call upon uh, the members in Capitol Room 323, uh, in Capitol Room 237, and Capitol Room 206 to come to the floor and vote. And senators, if uh, members in room 323 of the Capitol to make sure you're coming down to vote.
Have senators from room 237 voted? Senator Kent, if you're ready. Then I would call upon Senator Rosen, uh, pursuant to Rule 40.7, uh, to cast the votes for uh, those not present. Senator Rosen. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Anderson B. votes aye. Senator Anderson B. votes aye. Senator Hall votes aye. Senator Hall votes aye. Senator Senjum votes aye. Senator Senjum votes aye. Thank you. Well, Senator Kent, uh, pursuant to Rule 40.7, uh, those members uh, not present. Thank you, Mr. President. I report no for Senator Carlson. Senator Carlson votes no. I report no for Senator Clausen. Senator Clausen votes no. I report no for Senator Eaton. I'm sorry, Senator Eaton. Senator Eaton votes no. I report no for Senator Franzen. Senator Franzen votes no. I report no for Senator Klein. Senator Klein votes no. I report no for Senator Lane. Senator Lane votes no. I report no for Senator Latz. Senator Latz votes no. I report no for Senator Little. Senator Little votes no. I report no for Senator Newton. Senator Newton votes no. I report no for Senator Rest. Senator Rest votes no. I report aye for Senator Sparks. Senator Sparks votes aye. I report no for Senator Torres Ray. Senator Torres Ray votes no. I report no for Senator Wickland. Senator Wickland votes no. All members having voted. Senator Kent. Thank you, Mr. President. I report no for Senator Pappas. Senator Pappas votes no. So all members having voted, the secretary will close the roll. And the secretary having closed the roll, there being 45 ayes and 22 nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. Thank you, members. Okay. Oh. All right. Uh, uh, Senator Bach, for what reason do you rise? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I have a parliamentary inquiry. Uh, st state your inquiry. Uh, and, it and it better be good. Mr. President, what year were you elected to be a member of the State Senate? I, I need some help from the Secretary on this one. <laughs> um, I was sworn in uh, 
probably about January 3rd, 1987. Well, uh, Mr. President, have you ever presided before? No. Well, Mr. President, I, 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 just, wa I just want you to know I think you're doing an outstanding job. <laughs> All right, could, could we please get back to serious business? Um, <laughs> Senator Mr. Marty, for what reason do you rise? Mr. Chair, I wanted to challenge the ruling of the chair. <laughs> The, the chair has not ruled yet. Was, was that on Senator Box? Parliamentary inquiry? <laughs> Mr. Chair, I, I think that after 34 years of you chairing this at last, we ought to at least have some fun with you here. And I'm not sure what rulings you're going to make, but I'm sure it might be wrong. So I think we ought to challenge the ruling of it when it comes. S S Senator Marty, in, in, in response to that, um, I'm still waiting for that resolution you prepared for me a number of years ago. So I wouldn't complain. Uh, further discussion. Uh, I'm sorry, Senator Hayden, for what reason do you rise? Uh, well, Mr. Chair, uh, I rise to challenge the germaneness of 36.3. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't need any consultation with the Secretary. I, I think the germaneness uh, point raised by Senator Hayden is well taken. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. President. All right. Mr. President. All right, uh, members, we, Senator Mr. Benson. President, we do have a rule on the Senate floor that prohibits photography, except by official photographers. But given that they are not here, have we seen fit to violate our Senate rule and make sure that we have a picture of you presiding? Thank you. And um, uh, as, as president. Uh, as president of the Senate, it would be within my purview to name an acting official Senate photographer. So, uh, Senator Kent. Oh. She's not official, though. All right, members, thank you very much. Uh, the next bill under consideration. Oh, I know. We Senator Benson. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Benson moves that House File 3230 be taken from the table. On that motion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. We'll take a brief pause to gather the votes of the members in alternate locations.
Receiving a sufficient number of aye votes, the motion prevails. Senator Benson. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Benson moves that an urgency be declared within the meeting of Article 4, Section 19 of the Constitution of Minnesota with respect to House File 3230, and that the rules of the Senate be so far suspended as to give House File 3230 its second and third reading and place on final passage. Discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed say no. We will take a brief pause to gather the votes of the members in alternate locations. Receiving the 45 votes necessary, the motion prevails. The Secretary will give House File 3230 its second reading. House File Number 3230, a bill for an act relating to energy. Second reading. <laughs> Members, we now have House File 3230 in front of us. Senator Osmick. Thank you, Mr. President. Sen uh, House File 3230 is a late bill that came across from the House yesterday. That was the reason for the motions to bring it on to the floor. Uh, the language is identical to my original Senate file. Uh, this is the work of Representative Bo and the other body. Uh, it is a fairly straightforward bill. Uh, this did, the Senate file did pass from committee with a unanimous vote and also came, has been on our Senate floor for, uh, in general orders for quite a, t quite a bit of time. This has to do with the, uh, with um, energy, of, uh, lighting, energy efficient uh, promotions. Uh, right now under state statute or when the state statute was enacted, that was uh, written so that phosphorescent and high intensity discharge was the, uh, was the technology of the day. And as we now know, LED technology is much more uh, effective to provide light, uh, whether it be uh, for your home or for street lamps, and costs us a lot less, saves energy. And what we are doing with this bill, members, is simply striking phosphorescent and high intensity discharge and inserting LED into that program. That's all this bill does. It brings us into the 21st century, and I think sometimes we need to move into the 21st century. So, members, I'd appreciate a yes vote on this bill. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, Senator Osmick. Uh, Senator Simonson, discussion on the bill. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, Senator Osmick, for bringing this forward. I would just stand in support of the bill. It's a good bill. It's a good update. You should vote green. Further, Senator Thomasoni. Uh, Mr. President, is there a privileged report at the desk? Uh, <laughs> uh, Senator Thomasoni, no. Is there a chance you can bifurcate that decision? Uh, probably not. Okay. Further discussion on House File 3230, Senator Osmick's bill. Further discussion? In, are there any amendments? Okay. If not, uh, the Secretary will give House File 3230 its third reading. House File Number 3230, a bill for an act relating to energy. Third reading. The secretary will take the roll. If there's no, is there any further discussion on third reading? If not, the secretary will take the roll on final passage.
323 and room 237 could please vote. Here's one. Thank you. Has room 237 voted? Pursuant to Rule 40.7, uh, Senator Co Kent, uh, those not present in the Capitol. Thank you, Mr. President. I report aye for Senator Carlson. Senator Carlson votes aye. I report aye for Senator Clausen. Senator Clausen votes aye. I report aye for Senator Eaton. Senator Eaton votes aye. I report aye for Senator Franzen. Senator Franzen votes aye. I report aye for Senator Klein. Senator Klein votes aye. I report aye for Senator Lane. Senator Lane votes aye. I report aye for Senator Latz. Senator Latz votes aye. I report aye for Senator Little. Senator Little votes aye. I report aye for Senator Newton. Senator Newton votes aye. I report aye for Senator Pappas. Senator Pappas votes aye. I report aye for Senator Rest. Senator Rest votes aye. I report aye for Senator Sparks. Senator Sparks vo votes aye. I report aye for Senator Torres Ray. Senator Torres Ray votes aye. I report aye for Senator Wickland. Senator Wickland votes aye. Thank you. And then pursuant to Rule 40.7, Senator Benson, those not present in the Capitol. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Anderson B. votes aye. Senator Anderson B. votes aye. Senator Dames votes aye. Senator Dames votes aye. Senator Hall votes aye. Senator Hall votes aye. Senator Ingebrigtsen votes aye. Senator Ingebrigtsen votes aye. Senator Senjum votes aye. Senator Senjum votes aye. Thank you. All senators uh, having voted, the secretary will close the roll. There being 67 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and it's titled agreed to. All right. What do we do? I, I thought it was kind of important that people know how long you've been here. <laughs> I think we did. Hold the gavel up so folks can get a picture. Oh, what, what, where is he? Oh, all right. So we're conferring. We are? Yeah. Over what? <laughs> Good, Dick. Why should, why should I have the picture with the president then? Okay. So I'll call on Senator Kent for an announcement. Senator Kent, uh, Thank an you. announcement. Thank you, Mr. President. I understand we're going to be taking a recess here, and I would like to announce that the DFL caucus will be um, caucusing via Zoom, so keep an eye on your emails. Thank you. Other announcements? Senator Benson. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, GOP members should pick up a lunch in Capitol 235 and then go to room 1200 in the MSB. And with that, Mr. President, I move a recess to the call of the President approximately one hour. Senate's now in recess. Oh, I'm sorry. Senator Benson moves that the Senate recess until the call of the chair. All those, approximately one hour, I'm told. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, uh, is there a division? The Senate is now in recess. Thank you, Captain. Hard.